الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبدك الكتاب وحلم يجل له واجب أبدوه سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وهو الحمد والثناء وأشهد أن لا إله إلا وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نبيه الرسول والمستافر اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله بالعيد من وثنك الله ميري for every opportunity to be reminded of why he has brought us in existence. I think at some point in time, everyone thinks about it, but the thought leaves and shaitan makes us to forget. You have to realize that every human being has the light of Allah Almighty in them. They have the light of Adam and they have the light of Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with them. And we thank Allah Almighty for those lights. And Allah put those lights only in the human being. And that's why the human being is the only one that has the capacity to represent him. No other being, angels cannot represent Allah Almighty. The jinn cannot represent Allah Almighty. Only the human being, a human being that Allah Almighty raises because of their, their discipline, uh, their worship, uh, their gratitude and doing those things that please their Lord. Then Allah Almighty begins to awaken those lights in human beings. Every human being has the capacity to know them know their Lord in themselves. Allah says in the Quran, "A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, wal asri inna l-insan lafikus, illa l-latin aaminu wal amilus, salihati wa tawassal bil haqi wa tawassal bil sab." In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, by the token of time through the ages. Verily, man is in loss, except such as have faith and do righteous deeds and join together in the mutual teaching of truth and of patience and constancy. Well, this surah deals with surah the asr. Asr is the middle prayer. It is the prayer that from the by based on the sun, it is when the sun is directly uh, 12 o'clock, straight up, and from the time that it begins to set uh, around the time that the sun sets. So Asa Allah Almighty talks in the Quran about the value of missing the middle prayer. And you have to understand that it's the middle prayer because it's connected to the daylight and it's connected to the darkness. It's connected to heavenly knowledge and it's connected to earthly knowledge. And it's a powerful prayer. And it's usually during the time when people are their busiest. Moving around, moving about. But Allah Almighty created us so we may know Him. And He also 
created shaitan to challenge us in knowing him. And so during that time, during one of the most powerful of prayers, when Allah Almighty is going to connect the good of the earth and the heavens, Shaitan has us busy through our desires running after the things of this world. Allah Almighty set five prayers in motion. You have to realize that the prayers, Allah says, I've completed my favor on humanity. And you have to understand that Allah knows we've, Allah brought us here as physical beings. Allah knows all the tricks and traps of the human body. Allah knows that Shaitan is going to be able to tempt us through our desires, through our ego, through this world. He knows that. But Allah told the angels that he knew about the human being that nobody else knew. Because the angels were saying, are they going to shed blood? Are they going to do all kind of abominations? Even though the angels bow down without hesitation, Azazel, Shaitan, in his arrogance, thought he knew about the human being. He didn't, he didn't bow down. Didn't accept. I saw Allah bring the clay from the earth, the low life, and told everybody to bow down. This is a big test. This is a big test. Because what is he telling them to bow down to? He's telling them to bow down and trusting your Lord, trusting your Creator. He's here to be known by everything. Everything has to bow down. All the stones, all the rocks, all the grass, all the water, all the clouds, all the mountains, all the insects, all have their mode of worshiping Allah Almighty. We as human beings have forgotten. And Allah knew we were going to forget. And that's why Allah always is reminding us. But during the days we have the prayers. Every time you make a prayer, it takes you to the Akra. It takes you into divine presence. Every time you give charity or smile or something, it takes you to a good place. It takes you from a me or an I. It takes you to your reality of who you are and whose you are. But if Shaitan makes us to forget about what's going to help us to remind us of who we are and whose we are, then we take on a whole different nature, a whole different mentality. And that's why Allah says that those who are in loss who do not have faith. Allah Almighty has set up situations and circumstances so that we can always be getting our faith. Why Allah is telling us to pray? Why is Allah telling us to give charity? Why is Allah telling us to make Hajj? Why is Allah telling us to, to, to fast during Ramadan? And everything that Allah Almighty is telling us to do that's going to remind us of who we are and whose we are so that we may take from heavenly powers while we're in a low life and we need those heavenly powers, our egos resist it. There's a resistance. When the prayer comes in, we make excuses. Oh, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. I've worked. 
I, I worked for my family. I did this. It's time to fast. Everybody started getting sick. Our sisters stay on their courses for extra days. Our brothers, they start thinking, oh, I got a, a backache. I got this infection. I got this disease. I got this. I got that. I got to work. The ego starts to bring every doggone excuse. You tell somebody, okay, let's go to some show to see some superstar or go to some... You, if you're crippled, I'm going to be there. No matter what's wrong, we're going to find a way to be there because that's what our desire, that's what our desires want. So we are worshiping, we are worshipers of our desires, of our ego, of this world, and shaitan. That's why Allah Almighty says on Friday, leave everything. See, we forget that when we chase Allah Almighty, the world chases us. Our desires now take on a different kind of form. We begin, our desires now start to draw from heavenly desires that give us a power to attract those things that will distract us and misdirect us to something that's going to take us away from who we are. And so it's good to be reminded it's benefit to us. That's why Allah says, go to the mosque, hasten to the mosque. Leave off business. Leave off. The, leave your ego for a minute. Leave the world. Leave Satan for a minute. Because when it happens, we forget about Allah Almighty. We forget about ourselves. Now, trials and tribulations come on us. Illnesses come on us. All kinds of things begin to curse us because we are rebelling against Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty told everything to bow down to Adam. So when a human being is in accordance and obedience to his Lord, everything must serve him or her. When we're not, everything is to not to obey them. This is why we're, we take our protection off. Why would somebody lose leave from their protection if they understand that they are protected? See, even Satan makes us to forget the value and the and the and the blessing that he has given us. Except for those who have faith. Who come together in mutual teachings of truth with patience and constancy. They are not lost. You see people, they live their lives. They, if Allah Almighty is allowing any kind of gratitude or, 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 or satisfaction to desires, to our physical desires, we forget about everything else. But if we get in the habit of training ourselves, to remember Allah Almighty, a whole nother world opens up to us. We begin to live on a whole nother level of existence while we're here. Shaitan then no longer has a power over us and Allah Almighty will raise us up to represent, because he knows he's, we're going to represent him. And Allah Almighty, when you represent Allah, Allah represents you. Allah wants to brag on us. Allah told the angels, I know about them which you know not. See, the whole thing, how Allah Almighty is teaching all the angels, all the jinn, all the creatures, is through the human being. The lowest of the low. Every creature, every being know that the human being is from the lowest of the low. But what Allah Almighty has put in that being is the mystery, is the secret that unfolds itself. And that's why the words of Allah Almighty is something else. The Quran is something else. The ayats in Quran, the verses in Quran, they all take from each verse. 
It gives them power. You may read an ayat in Quran and you not understand that. Then you need to read something similar somewhere else and it gives meaning to that. It unfolds and gives another meaning to the meaning you thought you had. Look how Allah works. From the time that he created Adam and Eve and the children that came from Adam and Eve, were they Adam and Eve? Were their children's children, the children that, they, 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 the parents that they came from? Even though they're human beings, they are another human being with a whole, with, with the light of Allah, the light of, of Adam, and the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in them, each one unfolding, bringing new attributes into the world, unfolding new secrets into the world. From the time of Adam and Eve up until now, every human being unfolding another secret, not like the secret of their parents, but their own secret. That's how the Quran is. From an ayat of Quran comes another ayat. Another secret, another secret, another. But you cannot understand it if our desires are only for this world. If our thinking is only in this world. If we're not remembering something that's out of this world, we can never know and understand. So why do we go to mosques? Why do we go to churches? Why do we go to synagogues? Everybody wants to be prosperous. Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to feel good about themselves. But there is a method for it. And the enemy of humanity have people who claim that they worship God divided and conquered. When all human beings are coming from the two, Allah says from a sing, Allah says from a single being. From a single being. Allah says, I created Adam. Then from Adam, I created Eve. Then it changed from Adam and Eve, started coming uh, offspring. And here we are. We don't know how many years, we don't know how many years ago that was. But here we are as a process of that union, and we people still have babies. And those babies that you have are not like you, even though they're from you. They're bringing the light of Allah, the light of the Prophet, and the light of Adam in them. Still more and more is unfolding. Look at the outside. Back in the time of Adam and Eve, they didn't have no airplanes. They weren't getting no boats. They weren't in no submarines. They weren't driving no cars. They didn't have no air conditioning. They didn't have no heat. They didn't have the top technology that's going on. This has been unfolding, coming from the secrets of humanity unfolding to give more and more comfort and convenience to Allah Almighty's creation so that they may be grateful and thank their Lord. But we're not thanking our Lord, we're cursing our Lord by rebelling against His will. And that's why we, as we get older now, we have diseases we ain't never even had before. What is that? It's senility. If senility is, 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 is conducive to, is equal to getting old, what about Noah who was 950 years old? He shouldn't have had no mind at all. No mind at all. What was the secret there? What was the mystery there? How did he stay so doggone healthy? For 950 years. We're in our teens, we're in our 20s, we're decrepit. We have all kinds of mental illness, 
physical illnesses, spiritual illnesses. We broke. We in poverty. We angry. We jealous. We hate. We have pride. We are arrogant. For what? This is disease. This is a disease. At one time, you notice that religion it was the purified pages of Abraham. But before that, what was it? What was it? Then came the laws of Moses, the gospel of Jesus, the Psalms of David, the Quran of Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with them. That's because before Prophet Ibrahim, salam, they were in direct contact and communication with their Lord, Allah Almighty. Musa wasn't the first one talking to his Lord. But the thing is, it what goes around comes around. The process now in which Allah Almighty is bringing about the purification through him humanity so that human beings will be in direct contact with their Lord. That's what it is now. This is a whole nother age we're in. This ain't no read your book, your, read your Bible or your Quran thing, go to the mosque or church or, or synagogue thing. This is a reality. This is a real thing. This is reality we're experiencing. Why are we here? Who brought you here? Who takes you out of here? Who sustains you really when you're here? You never had situations where you ain't had nobody to help you nowhere, and then out of all of a, out of the blue, you got some help. Who you think that was? So we are so ungrateful. It, that's what causes the curses and the disease to come on us because of our being so ungrateful. This is why we have these mental diseases, these physical diseases, spiritual diseases, and poverty. Who did Moses work for? Who did Abraham work for? Who did David work for? Who did Jesus work for? Who did Muhammad work for? Who did Suleiman work for? What colors did they go to? Where did they get their diplomas from? What place did they apply for? Where, where did they send their resumes to work for the people? They were drawn from their reality. They were remembering their Lord and the Lord was remembering them. Allah Almighty never allows your faith to go in vain. I mean. But we don't have any faith. We have money. We don't need no faith. We got some money. Which is a farce in itself. Who brought that about? Who started that system? And everybody's relying on money now. I ain't got no money. So now they can't live. They're going to be depressed. They're going to do something stupid. See, we have forgotten. Allah says that those who don't have faith are lost. When we're lost, we're lost from our reality. We're lost from our blessings. We're lost from our health. We're lost from our prosperity. We're lost from our wisdom. We're lost from our power. We're lost from our love. People say, I was in love, but I got hurt. How in the heck are you going to get hurt by love? You're giving love a bad rap. That ain't love. <laughs> Allah Almighty does not bring us here to harm us. When we have that divine love in us, it increases us. It uplifts us. It gives us power. It unfolds us to us. Because a blessing is not just something that you have. It's a blessing is for everybody. The sun is a blessing. It's not just for the sun. The sunlight is not just that sunlight for the sun. That sunlight is for everything that comes under that, that's living, that needs that sunlight. So the blessing is. Oh, and bless, I got a check. Oh, I've been blessed. I got a, a wife. I got a husband. 
I had a kid, I'm, a, I'm blessed, I got a car. Okay? Now what? A blessing is something that continues to be bless, a blessing. It continues to unfold and give. It never stops giving. Doesn't harm you. It helps you. You in a relationship, you say, he don't love me no more. She don't love me no more. Well, you, you never, that, you never, that's not what you, y'all was lusting. Y'all wasn't loving. That wasn't love. You forgot about your Lord, and so your desires, your physical desires, just got tired of each other. Y'all even got tired of your mentality because maybe you weren't feeding each other's mentality. Maybe both of y'all got stupid. Nobody had any more stimulation, no stimulating conversation. Then as you get older, you lose your physical powers. Y'all ain't hooking up no more. Y'all forgot who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Can't even hear each other. Those are curses. Those are curses. When we're out of control with our ego. Those, that's a curse. That means we're off. We're disobedient to our own reality. All we got to do is listen to good advice and apply it in our lives. You ain't even got to like the person that you hear from. Just have enough decency and common sense and wisdom to use it on yourself. When you go to a, 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 a feast, you don't eat everything that's on the plate. You take what you want. It's there for you to take. You take what you want and you eat it until you're satisfied with the things that you've been taking that you wanted. You didn't sit there and just starve. Why would you do that with guidance, with good advice? Starve yourself? Come on. It's common sense. But we know common sense ain't so common no more. What is wrong with us? Shaitan is having a heyday saying that the Sons and daughters of Adam and Eve are stupid. Look what I'm doing. Seven billion of them. And I got at least more than six billion in my pocket. They don't believe in a lot. They don't have no faith. They believe in their money, their honey, their sunny, their funny. Technology got them all. You see them with the technology. They running in the cars because the technology got them direct. They, they're focusing so much on the technology, more so than they focus on the law almighty, and they're running the people and running the cars. Now, that's a lot of land now. Don't do that while you drive. And we call ourselves righteous people, wise people. Our basic and fundamental things are off. When somebody is walking somewhere and they and their natural rhythm is to walk one foot in, the, in front, they don't walk like sideways. They will look stupid. They would harm their bodies doing that. Just go with the flow of your mental rhythm, your physical rhythm, and your spiritual rhythm. It is natural to connect to our Lord. It's natural. What's causing us to be so unnatural? Happiness is something natural. Prosperity is something natural. Faith should be something natural. Love should be something natural. You shouldn't have to look to nobody for no love. You should bring some love. It should be the thing, who, who bringing the most love up in here? Everybody's scrambling for some love. I didn't give me some love. I need some attention. Oh, he ain't give me no attention. She ain't give me no attention. I'm hurt because I saw him or her giving somebody else some attention. Now I want to divorce them. What? That wasn't love. Love don't hurt. Love don't make you feel insecure. Love makes you feel very tranquil and very secure. Very strong, very powerful. 
That's what the world needs. That's what our streets need. How do you think we're going to shut down our streets? They don't have love. That's why it's easy for them to kill each other. They don't have no love. They don't see it coming out of the churches, the synagogue, or the mosque. See, everything starts in a humble way. Islam started very, very humble. First it was this house to house. Then it started to grow as that the people started to open up and start to follow the advice and started to apply the advice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They started to knock down the barriers of all those tribes that were against each other. And they started to work together. When they moved from Mecca to Medina, those who were in Medina and, and uh in Medina took the Meccans, took and the people that lived in Medina took some of the Meccans in their house home so they could know each other. And they saw Allah in each other. Shaitan had come between them and had them divided and conquered just like he do us. It's just, Shaitan got the same slow level. His method has not changed. He has not changed. But it doesn't matter that he hasn't changed because we haven't changed either. We still allow him to hit us. We're not growing in our wisdom. We're not hearing and obeying from that that gives us life. We're hearing and obeying that that gives us death. That's why we lose our mind, we lose our body, we lose our souls. How are we going to help somebody? A bunch of decrepit, dull, unlike unloved people going to go to the streets and stop the killings? I don't think so. You got to take a boldness with love. They got to see it. They watch it. They are watching. Especially those youth now. Their reality is something else. They have seen death from the time they was three years old to the time they were 13, 14. They ain't playing. They can see reality. They see. Because they, they have to. They, they, they have to be able to recognize somebody that's against them. They've got to be able to feel somebody that's against them. You see them at the funerals and they taking pictures with the corpse to relate to it because they know that that's me coming next. I'm coming next. What? Is that why Allah Almighty has created us? Where are the men and women of Allah Almighty? Where are they? Sitting idly by waiting for a new car or something or some money or a job to beg somebody on the job. Shuffle on the job to keep your dog on job. Shuffle for your Lord. So you can have some real power. That's why Allah Almighty always raised up people from the worst of the worst that had the worst of problems. And takes them to the reality of themselves until they begin to accept the guidance. And they begin to see that the guidance is giving them power. Then they become witnesses for the truth. Shaitan has no power over them. So if you ain't been beat down enough, this ain't for you. The grave is waiting for you. If you ain't ready to take up your sword, first of all, and fight the devil in yourself, and then outside of yourself, and get our babies back normal so they can be happy, you lie when you say you believe in Allah. You lie. You're lying to yourself. I don't care how many times you go into church or synagogue or the mosque. Don't make no difference. Allah says, I will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. Get rid of all that negativity in you. All that disbelief in you. All that doubt in you. All that me and I in you. And go with we. You can never know yourself unless you're dealing with other people. Unless you help other people. You can never know you. You will never know yourself living in a cave. You've got to be among the people to take some bruises in order to know that your strength, in order to know you and understand yourself. You've got to be involved. You'll be lonely in this life. You'll be lonely in the grave. And you'll be aware that you're lonely. You'll be aware of what you did and what you didn't do. A lot of them punish us. A lot of punish, we punish ourselves. What benefit is it to a lot for a lot to punish us? You ever did something and you regretted that you did? 
you did it and you regret it. So that's the punishment. Sometimes that gets larger. More and more feelings. Somebody came and knocked on your door with a million dollars and you told them to go away. And they said, no, I got something for you. No, go away. And then you shoot through the door and they run away and you find out that was somebody to bring you a million dollars. How much regret would you have then when you was broke? Calling up relatives and friends for some change. And somebody just left with a million dollars for you. This is how guidance is. When guidance, a lot of sense guidance to us is more than worth a million dollars. Only the wise get it. It ain't for stupid people. Nobody can, you can't be stupid and believe in you and follow your Lord. You can't, you can't be stupid and have faith. Because you've got to use your mind. You've got to look around and realize it's something that's happening. Somebody brought something. Look at the alternation of night and day. I mean, look at the fact that we were sperm drops. And here we are talking and walking and stuff with a consciousness. How in the world did that happen? I didn't do it. Parents didn't do it. They made us, but they didn't create us. Why do we keep forgetting that? Why do we keep forgetting that? Then our children grow up stupid, more stupid than us. That's why the greatest treasures are in the ground. People that took those treasures of their Lord about themselves in the ground, not the, the diamonds or the, or, the, or, or the oil. That's not the real treasure. The real treasure is that treasure of a lie in us, those lights in us that we never really were able to shine. Our lights should be brighter than the sun. The sun is a creation. The sun is not the crown of creation. Human beings are the crown of creation. Yet the sun is shining brighter than us. That's an abomination. We should be ashamed of ourselves. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Wonder why we're depressed. Why we want to take some drugs or overeat or, 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 or fornicate and steal and lie. That's the symptoms of the disease of disobedience. That's a curse. We can overcome that. We can overcome anything. Because we're God made, we're not man made. Our computer is man made. And yet man puts that together. But the one that put that together is God made. The one that's flying a plane through the air is God made. Even though they put the plane together. What do we want? We th See, when you forget about a lot, we really become stupid. It's really stupid. You have to remember to remember what we need to remember so we can remember to do what we need to do. From the middle. We lost our mind. Next time you're unhappy, go look in the mirror and say, I'm the reason why I'm unhappy. Don't blame it on your husband, your children, your boss, your neighbors, your mother, your father. Well, nobody encouraged me when I was a kid. What? You grow, you, you're 40 years old now. You don't need no mother or no daddy now. You should be a daddy or a mother. Come on. Come on, people. This is our time, and this is a great time to be great. Because Allah will make us even greater. Our imaginations cannot say how great we can be, because Allah Almighty is greater than our imagination. Wake up. Wake up. Enjoy this life. Enjoy this time. You don't know when you're going to be called out. You don't know, we don't, our number might be, every time, you know, every time a leaf falls off the tree, Allah Almighty is aware. Sometimes when you hear ringing in your ear, sometimes you may hear the ringing. That means that somebody's leaf have fallen off a tree, and that leaf hit your leaf, in the next 40 days, you're going to hear that somebody died. If it's in your right ear, somebody talking about you. If your left ear, somebody died. Somebody's going to die in the next 40 days. There are so many signs and so many secrets in the human being. In the human mind, there are so many secrets. In the human body, there are so many secrets. In the human soul, there are so many secrets. It's a go. We are walking gold mines or all uh, 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 mines or diamond mines or whatever within our being. Look what Moses 
did. Look what Jesus did. Look what they did. They reached the treasures in themselves. They all came through a woman. They were all not man-made, they were God-made. And they showed their reality. They represent the best in us. They showed us. This is what you do. In order to do this, this is what you have to do. You have to hear and obey your Lord's guidance. You have to be a good person. Don't mistreat people. Treat your neighbors like the way you want to be treated. Want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. If you're going to pray for something for yourself, pray also for something for them. That's how you put it on speed. Don't be selfish. Then the law Almighty will give you the power to do those things you never dreamed you could be do. Maybe your mentality was tied. Maybe you just felt stupid and you couldn't accomplish. The law will give you that. He, he sustained you and wake you up. Maybe your physical body is unhealthy. He'll give you the knowledge and the help to help you get that together. Maybe your soul is not right. He'll send the people to you to help you get that. Maybe your money ain't right. He'll send the people to you to help you to do that. He know we like he can. That's our creator. That's the law almighty. Law of Akbar. Law Nothing is worthy of worship but a law almighty. Those who have that, they have everything. They have everything. And they always gonna witness it. They always gonna witness. They always gonna witness. They always gonna brag on the law almighty because the law almighty is always bragging on them. And when the law is bragging on them, the law raise them up and show them. And no matter how high they go, whatever things that we love in terms of this world, they have the best of this world and the next world in this world. They get the inheritance of the next life and the inheritance of this life in this world. Allah raised them up and they tell. Allah gave it to me. They tell us how to do it. All you got to do is be obedient to Allah. All you got to do is be grateful to your Lord. Duh. Tabir. 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 That's it. That's all. I bet nobody couldn't give you a million dollars for your eye. How about an arm? There's no price for that. Hey, give me an eye for me. I get, give me another. I don't know. I want my eye. But why are you ungrateful then? Why are you complaining? Well, I'll take that eye. You'd be like, I want my eye back. Well, I'll take your health away. You'd be saying, I want my health back. Well, I'll take your mind away. You'd say, I want my mind back. So what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? That's why we need to be reminded. That's why the Quran is a reminder. The prophets were only reminders. That's all a righteous person is. They remind themselves and they remind others of what them, them, themselves have been reminded of about them. That's it, that's all. That's what righteousness is. Anybody can be righteous. Anybody can be good. You don't have to be a scholar. Just be a good person. Be a sincere. Be true to yourself so you be true to others. Don't lie to people. Be a good, honest person. Be clean. Clean your mind, your body. So you can see your Lord in your life. You can represent that light. You become a light for people. You don't have to say, I'm righteous. People are like, Be following you around, looking. Uh, where you going? <laughs> hey, something like that. That's where everybody. We've all been invited to that. So there's no need to be envious of anybody, jealous of anybody, or hate on somebody, or be arrogant about anything. You got it too. Just don't believe. Allah says when we die, we beg Allah to come back so we can represent those lights that we, that we see now. Oh, for what? Allah says, if you let you come back, you'll be cheated again. Shaitan will cheat you again. He'll dumb you down again. And he tells us, I don't have no power over you, I just whisper. So that means he knows what we like. He knows, he knows our desire, so he whispers. 
Hey, that's a fine baby. We'll go over there and talk to her. That's a fine brother. Talk to that brother. Hey, there's some money. Steal it. Hey, cheap lie. Oh, so-and-so deals with him. Kill him. You may think it and then, bam! Just for that moment, we, leave, we lose it. He don't have no power over us. We give him power. Everybody's face should be happy. They should be happy. They should be happy. You should have the confidence to know that you can do what it is you need to do to do what you need to do. If you don't have that, something is wrong. You better ask somebody about it, how to get it. Somebody knows. Somebody knows. Somebody always knows. And we're asking the Almighty to be with those knowers here and here. Woman of the Prophet, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rahman, Rahim. Malik, Yahudin. Iyaka, Nahudu, wa Iyaka, Nasta'in. Ihdina, Sirat, Al-Mustaqeen. Sirat, Al-Ladina, Anamta, Alayhim. Alhamdulillah, we are in the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, the Most Merciful, the Most Merciful, the Most Merciful. I'm usually not this long-winded. I'm usually finished by now. But Alhamdulillah, Allah knows. Uh, us and what we are in need of and Allah Almighty knows everyone's station and the importance of Juma is that everyone if they are open and seeking guidance uh, they learn about their stations uh, someone may say oh he's talking to me he sounds like he's talking directly to me how did he know that I was going through that I don't I don't know anything but your Lord knows your Lord knows. And all we're doing is the saying what comes to our heart. If it hits us, then it hits us. And we're nothing. Alhamdulillah, and we thank Allah Almighty if we have been able to give any benefit to anyone about anything. Especially to help someone and to turn their lives around. And that's a blessing because Allah Almighty says if you bring one soul to him, you get the blessings of a hundred martyrs. So we don't know what effect we have on people. We just do, keep doing what we're doing. Enjoy what we're doing like a singer. The singer don't know if they people are getting it. They don't even care if you know the words. As long as you got the rhythm and you and you enjoying it, you go to a concert and feel good. Why shouldn't you have get good advice and feel good? It should you should feel even better. You didn't pay a cover charge. <laughs> and you feel much better than if you went and listened to the OJs or somebody. Or whatever group you like. Because it gives you guidance for your soul. Something you can, when you leave, you can leave with something. Hope that you guard it and keep it because shaitan is going to come on you like white on rice. And say to you, that was false. We have to fight shaitan in ourselves. Don't think that shaitan is not on us. Don't think that shaitan is always on the other person. <laughs> oh, you got a devil on you. It's like Malcolm said, you point one finger at somebody else, you got three coming back in you. We're all sinners. But the reality of sin that Allah Almighty shows up our weaknesses that we have the ability to overcome. Otherwise, why would Allah bring us here if we didn't have the ability to overcome our weaknesses? We cannot say, oh, I'm, just, I'm human. No. You are God-made. Yes, your physical body is human, but you have the light of Allah, the light of Adam and the light of the Prophet in us. And that should be enough for us to overcome anything. We're asking God to forgive us for neglecting those lights and disrespecting our Lord and ourselves and outside of ourselves. Woman Law Tafika Fatiha. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah.
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. لا كم سمعت؟